My name is Brian Germain and I'm a parachute test pilot. Uh, this particular test jump was uh, early January of 2008. Uh, you can see the camera on my helmet and I also have a camera attached to a, uh, a belly mount system. Uh, and to the right of the frame you'll see uh, my chest mount altimeter as well. Here I'm preparing for exit at 13,500 feet. Now uh, it's important to note that, that we normally exit from this altitude but we uh, we don't normally deploy our parachutes at 13,000 feet. This is, uh, again, a test jump, and I'm doing what we call a hop and pop. So I exit, I throw my pilot chute immediately, out comes the parachute, and immediately I find myself in line twist, like a swing set. My parachute is spun up, but on a high-performance canopy like this, uh, it can spin very, very fast, and the G-forces can pick up uh, to a tremendous uh, amount. And so in this case, uh, I'm not cutting the parachute away, and that is because, number one, I am an experienced test pilot with over 13,000 jumps, but I'm also at a very high altitude, and, uh, and I can feel that I'm not out of control, like I'm not uh, blacking out. Now, of course, here I come close to blacking out because I'm trying to steer my way out of the malfunction. Normally, I would have cut this parachute away immediately. Uh, if I had deployed at the normal altitude of 3,000 feet, uh, this parachute would be gone and I'd be safely under my reserve canopy. However, in this case, I am uh, test flying the thing and I'm trying to figure out uh, if there is a way to solve this problem. Uh, keeping a positive frame of mind and, of course, going into the situation with a, a calm uh, internal dynamic. Um, as a result, here I am uh, some uh, 80 seconds uh, after exit, finally getting myself into a stable configuration. The parachute is flying now. Of course, I am thoroughly exhausted and quite frankly terrified at this point. Uh, thousands of jumps cannot prepare you for the, uh, the G's that you pull in this sort of a malfunction situation. Uh, I would recommend to, uh, to any skydivers that if you find yourself in this kind of a spin, immediately cut the parachute away and deploy your reserve. Uh, but uh, I chose not to, and it's an interesting uh, demonstration of what's possible uh, even under uh, tre tremendous duress. That if you, uh, if you go into the situation uh, with uh, a low heart rate, kind of a low arousal level, you can uh, maintain your demeanor and you can maintain your ability to act and solve your problems. And I think that is the positive message from this experience, uh, that, uh, that I was able to sort out the problem in 80 seconds. Here I am at 5,700 feet above the ground. Um, eventually, of course, I've got to land. So now the real job kicks in. This is the most important part, how we initially react to fear, to adrenaline, is to me not the most important part. The most important thing to me is what we do once we feel the fear. Do we take the time, as I'm doing right now, to take deep breaths, slow down, kind of looking for traffic here, but I'm also in very deep breaks. I've slowed the situation down, reducing my airspeed, reducing my descent rate, and trying to reduce my internal speed, the speed at which I'm thinking. I'm looking out at the horizon trying not to, to look around too much, relaxing my muscles, catching my breath. And what starts to happen then is the change that has occurred inside my consciousness and, and, and in, inside my brain uh, is now starting to go away, that I'm going back into a more normal state. But it takes time. The more adrenaline we experience, the longer it takes to kind of come down off of all those drugs that are given to our system. So uh, I think that is a very important message that uh, we all must learn how to calm ourselves down to the best of our ability so that we can live our lives, so that we can expand our solution set and become who we want to be in the world. years old with a flower sack cape tied all around his neck He climbed up on the garage, figuring what the heck He screwed his courage up so tight the whole thing came unwound Got a running start and bless his heart, 
He hit it for the ground He's one of those who knows that life is just a leap of faith Spread your arms and hold your breath And always trust your cape All grown up with a flower sack cape Tied all around his dreams He's full of piss and vinegar And he's busting at the seams Well, he licked his finger and checked the wind It's gonna be do or die He wasn't scared of nothing, boys He was pretty sure he could fly Cause he's one of those who knows that life is just a leap of faith Spread your arms and hold your breath And always trust your cape Now he's old and gray with a flower sack cape tied all around his head Well he's still jumping off the garage and he will be till he's dead All these years the people said he's acting like a kid He did not know he could not fly, so he did He's one of those who knows that life is just a leap of faith Spread your arms and hold your breath and always trust your cape He's one of those who knows that life is just a leap of faith Spread your arms and hold your breath and always trust your cape Spread your arms and hold your breath and always trust your cape